Obviously, you know, um, you know, talked about the game yesterday. Not a real good job by us uh, going out and executing at a high level for the entire game. Uh, some good plays in the game and then uh, some plays that are not so good where we obviously gave up some big plays there defensively and didn't capitalize on some plays offensively and uh, would have put us in better position to uh, have a chance to win. So got a lot of work to do. We obviously got a big week in front of us here, um, you know, a big division opponent. So got to get back at it and uh, regroup and get better. Matt, who, who makes the decisions for running back usage and running back distribution? That would be a staff decision and some that, something that I'm definitely uh, aware of and, and on top of. Do you feel like carry on should be getting more work at this point? Uh, I think we have a lot of really good running backs, and I think we try to use them appropriately. Um, you know, and I think uh, carry on played a significant amount of the game. Uh, you know, he played 20 snaps at 55. That's a good amount. Plus, we have two other running backs. Plus, we had a couple minute, two minute drives in there with some other personnel packages and things like that. So, there was uh, quite a bit of reps in there for carry on. From a, a, a team that used the running backs in, in various ways, like that, uh, really dividing up the rotation. Have you ever done any studies on, like, I guess maybe finding if guys are better when they're fresher and, and used, I guess, as opposed to 50 or 55 snaps, but you know, 20 here, 20 here, 10 here? Um, you know what? We do a lot of studies on, on full seasons and where, you know, guys are at the end of the season, especially running backs and especially that position in, in uh, directly. You'll find a lot of teams where uh, guys may be earlier in the season um, at a high productive level. And by the time they get to the end of the season, the wear and tear of that position is pretty, it's pretty extreme. So, you know, you get to the end of the year and those guys aren't, um, you know, maybe out there as much. So um, you kind of take a look at it from a big picture standpoint, but a game by game standpoint, a play by play standpoint. We're obviously trying to compete and win at a high level. So we want to have our best players out there at all times that we can. And, um, you know, we feel that we have a really good, strong running back group. They're all uh, outstanding players. And, and um, you know, we're just going to continue to try to improve them just like we are every position. Coach, your team before you got here had kind of a, a modus operandi of coming back. The losses to San Francisco and then the one yesterday kind of showed the peril of that, that things aren't always going to work out for you when you're living on the edge like that. But you got to play consistently through the game. Yeah, you know, I would agree with that statement. I think when you, um, you know, when you play in those types of games where you're kind of relying on for last possession or um, you know, it's kind of coming down to the end where there's really no control in the game. I would say you're kind of holding your breath. You know, these are extremely good teams on both sides of the ball, and um, obviously good good offenses that you got to face. And, and uh, for us as an opponent, and we obviously have an offense that can do a good job there at the end of the game um, of coming back. But um, you don't want to be in that position. That's not really where you want to be. You want to be in a more controlled atmosphere from a team standpoint, and uh, you know, feel like you're in position to to win. Uh, we always, you know. We're always going to go out there and fight. We're always going to give ourselves a chance to win or give ourselves and put us in a position to, to try to do that. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we can come through and sometimes it doesn't happen the way we want it to. Well, this is at least the uh, fifth or sixth known concussion for uh, TJ Lang. Do you have an update on, on his status and just more broadly, what kind of concern do you have for a player who has those kinds of repeated Sure. Um, I don't have an update other than, you know, he's in protocol right now with that. Um, and I always have a concern for all my players that are hurt um, or get injured during a game. Um, no matter what the injury is, it's a violent game. It's, a, um, it's an aggressive game. And, and these guys, uh, you know, are tremendous uh, men and athletes that go out and, and play the game. So um, we're obviously going to do everything we can to make sure that he's okay. And that's the most important thing. What type of balance do you have to have, though, with talking to a guy about his long-term future when he's had five or six of them? Because it's more than just a football thing. It's a life thing, as we all sure. know. What, what type of level of balance do you have? Do you have that conversation and say, hey, maybe it's time to walk away or take time off or, or something like that? Well, you know, I mean, I think number one for me, I'm, I'm – you know, I'm very close with my players. I'm, I'm someone that I think is a pretty compassionate person. So I'm always going to make sure that uh, people in general are safe. I think that's the number one thing for me. I don't really care what you do for a living or what your job is. And, um, you know, we're always always going to be, um, you know, making sure that everybody's okay. You know, I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't want anybody to have long-term effects or whatever the case may be, no matter what their job is. So um, other than that, you know, I mean, obviously there's people there that are a lot more educated on the subject than I am. And, and you know, my biggest thing is just to make sure that um, I'm doing what's best for, for our guys and uh, to help us to try to compete, but obviously not put anybody in harm's way. Another related question is that is Ziggy Yonsei candidate for IR at this point. Sure. Again, you know, we're um, day by day with all of those guys, and we're you know continually we'll update the um, injury report when it comes out, and they're they're working better to uh, to get better. Again, it's just day by day for us. That's all it is.
You've been getting contributions all year from, from Ragnow and uh, Carry On, more recently from, from Deshaun Hand, uh, Tracy Walker. Yep. I was just wondering if you could speak um, broadly to your draft class and some of the immediate contributions they've given you in the first month. Yeah. Season. Yeah, those guys have really had to step in and, and um, and play some, you know, some real important football snaps for us. Um, even Tracy's, you know, he's in some critical situational type stuff, so it may not be the same numbers as Frank or Carry On, but um, the the plays are critically important that he's in on. Um, I think those guys have done a really good job of, of, you know, learning and trying to adapt to the NFL and to our team and to what we expect and um, to study the, the game plans and, and showed enough during the spring and through training camp that we could trust them in those situations. They've got a long way to go. You know, this is a long season. Um, and, in fact, a lot of the guys that come out of – um, the college ranks here, you know, you'll get to about week 10 and they've already finished an entire college season and they don't understand we're just getting going. So, um, you know, you have to be a little bit conscious of that uh, as you're going through with those guys, but continually trying to develop them, giving as much attention as possible, um, extra reps if you can, work with them after practice, a little bit more meeting time, just to make sure that you're continually trying to go over and get them caught up. I'd say the biggest thing that, um, you know, when you're a rookie in this league, you know, is the experience. You know, there's just so many things that the veterans have a chance to see or go through or experience or uh, maybe game situational stuff that um, you're trying to catch these guys up on uh, through film or through meetings and, and, you know, hoping that they're able to kind of handle that at a high level when it happens in the game. And with, with Cam, this is a guy who uh, struggled to, to realize his potential, if you will, at, at Alabama. Um, what have you guys done with him, you know, to get – I mean, it seems like he's done pretty well even from early in camp. What have you guys done with him to be able to – maybe maximize some of the stuff that he, he wasn't doing in college? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, I think what we saw on tape coming out of college is a lot of what we're seeing right now with the technique and, and plays with good fundamentals and pad level. Um, a lot of the system is similar, you know, to what he used in college, um, obviously with similar, um, let's call it coaching backgrounds from that aspect of it. So um, I think the transition was pretty – was pretty good for him from that standpoint. And then really, you know, it's just been on him to, to really go out and improve every single week. And I think that's the biggest thing with him uh, in particular is that there's been a big improvement from the spring to then to training camp. And I would say through the course of maybe the first couple weeks in training camp till we finally got to some preseason games uh, where we could kind of evaluate him against other talent and some other players. And I thought that it just – it just has continued to kind of get better for him. Um, I would say he's got a long way to go. I would think in general up front, uh, we didn't play particularly well enough all the way across the board. So, um, you know, not real good yesterday, but I think he's working himself in the right direction. A lot of coaches, and I'm not even sure if this is something you subscribe to, but they tend to kind of break down seasons as first quarter, sure. you know, four games, first quarters in the book. Um, can you just kind of speak to where you feel like your team is after the first quarter, maybe where you fell short, what sure. what kind of goals you have going forward or how things you know just change if at all. Yeah, I definitely um, I think there is a little bit uh, something about that with the you know the different quarters of the season, uh, and the first quarter being really the month of September is always the, the trickiest. I think um, you come out with the first game and uh, you come out of a different mode in training camp and where you are for preseason and you're trying to get everybody ready to go. And um, I think you try to you try to see improvement through the course of the month. Um, you start to settle in maybe on a couple more. Um, players, a couple more schemes, just to kind of what fits better for your team at that particular time, and then uh, really try to push to that second quarter to improve it as much as you can. So it's a lot of evaluation, I would say, that still goes on in September as far as uh, maybe it's a little bit more schematically um, what fits best for the guys that you have on your team, but there's still a lot of player evaluation too. To what extent, though, with a one-and-three finish in that first quarter, do you feel like you guys fell short of your expectations coming in? Yeah, I mean, well, fell short obviously on three games. You know, I mean, we we got to go out and we got to play better. We expect to win every week, and that's what we're trying to do. So, um, you know, it's 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 a process for us, but um, we got a lot of work to do. You know, there's a lot of work in front of us. I think we're learning a lot about our team. I think we see a lot of different things on the field. Um, I would say the you know these guys are tough. These guys are you know, work extremely hard. You know, they'll fight all the way to the end for 60 minutes. They're in good shape. And, um, you know, that's a real positive for us. Obviously, there's some things in there that got to, you know, be better. We got to coach some things better. We got to improve some of the play on the field and some of the things that are doing that are um, not allowing us to be in a position to win. And that's really what we got to get to is we got to get ourselves into a position to win. Max, a little chance to go around. back and look at the Aguara <clears throat> play. And how difficult is it for a player in the millisecond to try to hold up when he may think the play is live and of course it could go the other way where 
go sure. with it. Sure. I mean, it's a hard play. Um, I don't really have any comment on it. It just, unfortunately, you know, is what it is on the field. So um, we got to just, you know, continually try to coach it up as far as, you know, hear the whistle. We got to pull off. We obviously know the quarterbacks in the situations there. We're trying to uh, make sure we do a good job there of not having any penalties or the situation that kind of surrounds those guys. So um, it was a hard play on the field, I thought, live. You know, seeing it live, I thought it was real close. But, um, you know, obviously the officials saw it a certain way. So that's what it is. It is what it is. Um, Jen's question, uh, the first one, uh, a little bit more. I mean, where you came from, the teams that you were a part of were always, you know, the first quarter was sort of that feeling out process. I mean, how do you balance that? It's such a short season with 16 games, you know, that, that you're able to, I guess, um, evaluate personnel, I guess, a little bit more. And, and, sure. uh, and, and why, I guess, over the final three quarters have you seen teams, you know, have, have that success that they've had, I guess? Um, let me make sure I get your question right. Uh, I would say just, you know, in general, again, the first part of the year is it's a little bit tricky in that first quarter. Again, you're trying to figure out a lot of things about your team and uh, playing some maybe some different opponents that you haven't played before or, or different uh, players that are in the league that maybe you haven't seen before, whether they're rookies or whatever the case may be. Um, and then, you know, again, you're just trying to make sure that second quarter is better than the first quarter. That's the whole point. And, um, you know, week in, week out, we're trying to win. So that's not really the – that's not really the – that's not really a conversation. It's just try, you know, we're trying to get better and put ourselves in a better position to win each week. Um, so certainly we got to do a better job next week than we did this week to do that, and um, you know, not try to put ourselves in a situation where the game is coming down to the last play or whatever it may be, um, and try to have a little bit more control to start. So. Um, you know, in the player part of it, it moves all the time, and especially during the season, it moves from a standpoint of injuries or guys may be in or out of the lineup or may earn more playing time based on what they've done through the course of the first couple games. And, and um, you know, you try to get them out there on the field a little bit more. So I think we're, you know, we definitely see that. I think you guys see that too. And there's some different guys that um, roll in and out of there based on um, the situation. So we we'll continue to just try to evaluate that and then just hone into those different groups that are out there. Coach, your first uh, divisional uh, matchup as a head coach. Is there anything different for you as far as vibe practice this week or <laughs> preparation since you may not be familiar with the players here have been familiar with playing in the division? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, division is, you know, it's be a huge game for us this week, um, you know, and, and obviously a very difficult opponent to roll in here with. Uh, you know, uh, in the division. Um, every week for us is pretty intense. You know, I mean, every all the games are important. Um, we got to do a great job this week of preparing, you know, and learning this team. I think the teams, uh, we might know some of the players, you know, on the team, but I think the teams are always a little bit different year in, year out. Um, there'll be some tendencies, things like that, that we'll understand and obviously look for. But, um, you know, they do a great job up there. Now, I mean, I have the utmost respect for um, Coach McCarthy and that program and, and Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's, you know, he's one of the better, obviously, best quarterbacks in the league. So, um, it's a huge challenge for us. We got to, you know, get through today. We got to get everything corrected from yesterday. We got to move on, and we got to get going on Green Bay. It'll be a huge week. Any challenges that uh, Rodgers presents to the defense? Yeah, he's um, he's very very difficult. This guy is extremely smart. He's very aware. Um, obviously, um, tremendously cool under pressure. You know, there's not a lot that phases this guy. Um, you know, I've, I've played against him a couple times here. So um, you just his uh, his ability on the field to just make plays happen and get the guys in the right position and diagnose coverage, see the fronts, um, just run that offense and just be in tune with every single thing that they're doing offensively. Um, he, he's phenomenal. So that would be a big challenge. Okay, thanks.